Hey, this is Ryan at the world famous Whisker Biscuits Dog Bakery for another segment of our DIY dog treats. Do it yourself. This is gonna be great for you lazy folks out there. It's super simple, super easy to do. It's a two ingredient dog treat recipe. We're gonna start, we're gonna take you through the process which is gonna be super fast and show you how it's done. If you haven't already subscribed, hit the bell down below so you get our notifications when they come out every week. And leave us a comment and let us know what you'd like to see us do as we move into the segment. This is gonna be a weekly thing that we're doing. So, here we go. We're gonna take care of our ingredients. Pretty simple. Four ounce jars of baby food. That's what we happen to be using. In our case, we're using a Gerber brand. Doesn't matter what you use, you can also substitute purees in for either of these. These guys can be any flavor you like. We're doing a vegetable kind of fruit motif. We're running mango, apple, banana, and sweet potato, apple, and carrot. We also have one cup of wheat flour, and we're obviously using a flour that has a little bit of grain in it. If you're grain-free, you could certainly move to a grain-free alternative. You are gonna have to incorporate an egg, though, to make sure it stays together once you bake it. Also, make sure you grab a mixing bowl. We're gonna use a spoon, a rolling pin, and then, of course, a tray to cook them on, and ultimately, any kind of cookie cutter that you like. We have, for no particular reason, a miniature chicken here. Uh, doesn't make a lot of sense, but it happened to be laying around, and we want to make a smaller treat this week. You can also use a knife, cut them into squares, whatever you have laying around the bottom of a glass, the bottom of a Tupperware container, any of those things will work. So we're gonna grab our mango apple banana. And of course, into our bowl. If you have a little spatula, you can certainly get in there. Oh my God, it's all over the place. Man, if I was only a baby. All right, we're gonna throw our cup of flour in, and then grab yourself a spatula. Start to incorporate it slowly here. You're gonna have to get your hands in there at some point, but until it comes together, it's pointless. You can always use, like I said, any kind of puree in here will work. Puree some apples, pears, anything. Just make sure you don't get the seeds in there. Once you get it to that crumb-like consistency there, we're gonna go in with the hand. I'm gonna throw a little bit of flour on my hand just to keep it from sticking. And we're just gonna mix these guys together the rest of the way. Get all the flour off the sides of the bowl. Man, that smells awesome. This is the world's hottest bakery today. So if you see me melt on screen, disregard that. I imagine it's gonna look a lot like the Wizard of Oz scene with the melting witch. All right, we are now gonna be out of bowl on the table. We're gonna smash this out a little bit. It's a great consistency. There's a little bit of give there. We're gonna get our trusty rolling pin, grab a little bit of flour, just a touch. Now, these are gonna get a little bit sticky, so make sure you flour them much like you would with a pizza crust. Get them down to about a quarter of an inch. And the reason that you wanna get them nice and uniform is so that when you bake them, they bake evenly. You don't have a bunch of wet spots in there. Grab your trusty cookie cutter. Like I said, we're using a chicken for no particular reason. And just work through your dough here. Whew. Tough to believe I do this for a living. If you do feel a little bit lazy and you want to make your way over to our website at some point, whiskerbiscuits.com is where you can always find us. We're also working with some local rescues so that we can donate everything we make in our videos at the end of the week here. All right, so we've got a bunch of chickens cut out. We are using a tray, standard tray, sheet tray, and a little bit of parchment paper, any kind of cookie sheet, a silicone baking sheet, all that stuff works well. So just throw them on. These are also, when they're smaller like this, they're gonna cook very quickly. Now, the great thing about dough is, especially making dog treats at home, you can suck up all those pieces on the table. And what we're gonna do here, again, use a little bit of your flour. I got some stuck underneath here. That's my secret flour depot. 
My chickens are all trying to run together. Trying to get, I don't know, maybe there's a wolf they're running from. I don't know. I'm gonna roll it out again. Make sure you don't flatten your cutter. Again, get them to about a quarter of an inch. You don't have to be real particular. And the last thing we're gonna do is make this really easy and just cut some longer pieces. That way we have some slightly larger treats. We're gonna put our tray underneath there. Make sure they spread out. You don't really want them touching when you bake them. So now that we have these cut out and trayed, what we're gonna do is we're gonna throw them in the oven, the 325 degree oven for 30 minutes if you want them a little bit soft. If you want them a little bit crunchier than that, do them for 45 minutes. Let's grab these babies out of the oven. And there are our chickens, beautifully browned up. This concludes our two recipe apple mango banana dog treat. Thanks for stopping by today. We hope to see you for our next episode. Make sure that you comment and let us know what you want to see us make. Thanks. Nice.